The Earth has been round for a very long time. In a landmark book, the journalist Thomas Friedman teaches us that it may now have become flat. It seems flat because wherever you are, you can easily see, hear and access what can be found in places all over the world. Nevertheless, the exchange of information, the flow of communication and the production of knowledge are concentrated in specific geographical areas. In the domain of science and technology, these places appear as peaks in such a flat world. These peaks, often a town with its surroundings, are called clusters and are hotspots for scientific and technological research. Let us focus on a specific area of scientific and technological research, nanotechnology. This relies on work and manipulation at a molecular scale, even atomic, thus allowing mankind to get access to new properties and functionalities. In years to come, this research could enable us to find numerous applications in the fields of medicine and electronics and help us create new materials with various uses. Of course, the diversity of these applications will not, by itself, bring an end to inequalities because, like in all scientific progress, there are benefits and risks as a result. What is certain, however, is that nanotechnologies will change things and reorganize the economic space. In order to better understand these evolutions, we can track a significant indicator, the number of publications in specialized journals through which researchers communicate their results. Between 1998 and 2008, publications on nanotechnologies increased by 14% each year. Three large driving forces of this global increase have been identified. Asia, with 34% of publications, Europe, with 33%, and North America, with 23%. Within these countries, research is strongly localized in just a few clusters. 203 clusters producing 80% of nanotechnology scientific publications worldwide. Not all of these places have the same importance. The main clusters are in the triadic countries, Europe, North America and Japan. These places take their importance from their historical weight in scientific research matter and the large concentration of multinational companies which they accommodate, as well as the power of the states in which they are located. However, other clusters also appear outside the triadic countries, especially in Asia. With an increase in publications of 272% in eight years, it is the part of the world which has had the largest increase. China, in particular, is the only country emerging from the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India and China, who invests greatly in the field of nanotechnologies. The clusters are developing there very rapidly to compete with the great historical clusters. All over Asia, cities like Singapore, Hong Kong, Taipei, Seoul or Beijing are challenging the hierarchies inherited from the past. However, these recent clusters, although important, are less interdisciplinary than the triadic ones. They are especially linked to the domains of chemistry and electronics, while biology appears less in them. What's more, the visibility of their publications, which is an indirect marker of their quality, appears to be lower. Let's now look again at the map of the world to study another essential factor in understanding the dynamic of the clusters, their interconnections. Clusters do not develop independently one from the other. They have links between them. In this way, a hub-and-spoke perception of clusters is taking shape in which highways and central points of exchange shape the landscape. But how is the situation for Europe? Density of connections between clusters shows us that Europe is already a reality for the production of knowledge in nanotechnology. While a few clusters, London, Paris, Delft and Berlin, serve as the main entry gates to clusters of other continents. It is also an important question to know which of these clusters will be better in transforming science and technology potentials in applications intended for markets and uses. It is this process that will make nanotechnologies part of our daily life, where they will express their potentialities and face their limits. The presence of firms and the production of patents are indirect ways to help measure this crucial process of knowledge exploitation that produces innovations.
They will reveal the main clusters that will shape the economy and the society of tomorrow.